to find Grandpa, but I got lost. I'm sorry. Laura, 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 awake, Laura Parton, in the name of the Great Mother. I have found your soul at long last, and through it I can speak to you. You must fight, Laura. You must fight for all. Laura, you're awake. Good. You're okay. Jenny's okay, too. <laughs> what happened exactly? I was just sitting here worried because you were gone so long. Then all of a sudden, the two of you just fell out of the sky. A bright golden light lit up the entire room, and then boom! See? up there. What are you, anyway? A witch, maybe? A good one, I hope. Maybe you have teleporting abilities or something. <laughs> well, that's one more thing we can't figure out. A at least we have Janny back and the gas you found. So... We could take the snowmobile and get out of here. I ran across a small valley while you were out. And I think we can make it if we push the snowmobile to the limit. <laughs> Scared? Don't worry, I'll drive. Come on, are you ready? Seems like there's more monsters around now. And it's getting colder. Especially in here. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, young lady? Huh? <laughs> Laura and I were worried sick about you. I'm sorry, Kim. I knew Grandpa's house was nearby, so I tried to go find him, but I couldn't. Where's my Grandpa? I want to go see him. I want to see my Grandpa. Do you know where he is? I promised I'd come see him. And he promised he'd show me the northern lights. And magic tricks. It's my birthday soon. 
I want to celebrate with Grandpa. Alara, don't cry. There's nothing you could have done. You know how things are. You're not to blame. But what we are responsible for is making sure this little girl is safe. Right? Jenny? Jenny, do you remember the first time I saw you? Uh-huh. I remember. Jenny? You were with Laura, right? Was there anyone else with you two? Anyone else? A man. No, no one else. There wasn't anyone else ever. After the airplane crashed, I was all alone for a long, long time. And then Laura found me. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. Was Laura with a man? Someone named David? Uh-uh. Laura was all by herself, just like me. We were walking. Then Laura suddenly went to sleep. So I went to sleep too. Next thing I know, we're here with you. Oh, so when you woke up, you were here? Uh-huh, and so were you, Kimmy. So... Where are your mom and dad? My dad went away a long time ago. So I went on the airplane with my mom, but she, she fell asleep. Fell asleep? The airplane crashed in the snow, and I got really cold. My mommy held my hand like she always does. My mommy's hands are so But her hands kept getting colder and colder. I told her that her hands were cold. But she said it was because of the snow. And that everything would be okay. Then she kept getting colder and colder. So I tried to warm up her hands like she always did. But it didn't work. She said it would be okay. And we just held hands. And Mommy went to sleep. Oh, Jenny. I'm sorry, Kimmy. That's why I didn't want to go to bed. I was scared of going to sleep. So I tried to find Grandpa instead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, Jenny. You don't have to be scared anymore. Fall asleep and go away too? Not, not you, Jenny. You're going to be perfectly all right. Because you've got Laura and me. It isn't going to be easy. But remember this, Jenny. Huh? You can never give up hope. Hope? Yes, hope. Hope. It's the most important thing anyone can have in life. To believe. To keep believing and never give up. Not ever. To have a bright light burning in your heart. As long as you believe. That light will grow stronger and brighter to light your way. Oh, I understand. Grandpa always says, Jenny, even if bad things happen, have faith in tomorrow. That's right, Jenny. You're so strong. Uh-huh. Hope. I know about that now. Grandpa taught me a lot of things. Jenny, you're a very smart girl. You understand, don't you, that you can't see your mother ever again? I'm afraid not. Your mother had to go to sleep to be safe so she could protect you forever. She was a wonderful person, honey. I know. You have to 
to survive no matter what, Jenny. For your mother's sake. Okay, Kimmy. Mora, Kimmy, can I ask you something? What's that? Hmm? Can I call you and Laura mommy? <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> You're so warm. <laughs> Come on, Laura, Jenny. Let's get going on the snowmobile. We have a valley to cross. And Laura has to find this David guy and... I need to apologize to Parker if we ever run into him. Let's go. dark in here. Can you find a light switch somewhere? Oh, here it is. Hmm, I guess there's no one here. I wonder if it's alright just to take some things. Laura. Hmm? Could you search this room and see if there's anything useful? I thought I saw another light ahead, a yellow one. I'm gonna go check it out. And Janny, you come with me. Okay. okay. All right. We'll be back as soon as we finish checking it out. You're not scared to be alone, are you? <laughs> 
Please don't. What do you mean by that? You say amusing things. <laughs> Help, huh? I bet all the people you victimized until now pleaded for their lives in the same way, huh? Stop, please. Help. Pitiful. Hurting my ears. Shut up, will you? My head hurts. It's pounding. Don't shout. Do I, do I have to beg, huh? Ah, it's Linda. You want to take some? This stuff's different from the usual stuff they sell. It's more potent and really works. You don't need any, because you're going to die soon anyway. Or are even monsters scared of death? I guess it doesn't really matter, huh? It doesn't matter what happens to you, because you're not human anyway. Are you? You're not human. You're wrong. <laughs> you say such crazy things. What's not true? I saw you with my own two eyes. What wasn't true about how you mutated into that... that thing? How you attacked my father. How you ate him! Ate him! You're wrong. Liar! You're disgusting! Go not on, true. why don't you show yourself? Go ahead and blossom into your sick, disgusting, real self. Right now! Come on! Who's there?
who do we have here? Do, do come and join us. Isn't that nice? We have company. Do you blossom into a pretty flower, too? Come on, show me. I want to see. <laughs> conduct an experiment, shall we? Yes, an experiment. You know, a test on both of you. Well, let's see. Who should I shoot first? It's re really simple. See, I take this pistol and bang, I shoot your foot. Bang! And if I see green blood, you lose. Bang! <gasps> if I shoot you in the head, you won't be able to move. And if there's red blood, I guess I'll just have to untie the rope. Rope. Red blood proves you're human, you see? But if you bleed green, you know what happens. Hey! <gasps> I'm talking about you! Yes, you! Do you hear me? Experiments are fun. I want to see you turn into a monster. <laughs> ah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Look, look, I'm going to shoot you now. This is for what you did to my father! Huh? Huh? What the Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh, God. This is so twisted. I mean, suicide and homicide are supposed to be totally different things. Why is this happening to me? anymore. just ahead and I saw it there too.
Thanks, Laura. You saved my life. I guess she's a clone, huh? just like me. Gives me the creeps. I guess they have the ability to replicate the exact physical appearance of their victims. Oh. <laughs> Do you think I'm... <laughs> Don't worry, I'm human. You can't clone a person's mind. They grow at an accelerated rate from a DNA sample. A brainless Xerox copy. I guess if they're capable of a real conversation, they're probably not a clone. But they do, do learn pretty fast. Did you notice how that one could talk a bit? It was mostly mimicking, but in the end, maybe you can only go by the color of blood. It just seems so sinister. You do believe me, don't you? Can't say that I blame you. I bit the inside of my cheek. It's hard for me to even know what I am anymore. With all the crazy things going on around here. You end up suspecting yourself of the worst things. sleep well knowing there's three of us. <laughs> it's tough trying to go to sleep by yourself. With no good memories to fall back on, it's like, like, like the night clings to you. The tides of night surging in, thick as tar, cutting you off from everything, leaving you all alone in the universe. refuge with these drugs. <laughs> to tell you the truth, the medicine is the reason I was on that plane. The room was so thick with sticky, suffocating darkness that night. I thought I'd drown. I took my medicine, and that's when I saw it. In a trip. It was kind of a vision. A vision of a landscape. And after that, I could see it almost every day whenever I took a dose. I knew I was being called there. And then I saw the place where this drug originated from in a newspaper. The article was about Linda, how it was extracted from a type of lichen only found in the tundra of northern Canada. It mentioned that Linda triggered psychosis and aggression in some people, and that several violent murders in the past few years were committed by perpetrators who had taken Linda, and that even many acts of cannibalism had been reported. The story went on about the relationship between human aggression an instinct, but I couldn't take my eyes off the photograph. I was mesmerized by it. It was exactly what I seen in my vision. The same landscape. And that's why I got on that plane. Of course, you know the rest. 
podcast. Laura, do you remember anything yet? Your mother and that compact. And that David guy. He could be out there, still waiting for you. That David guy. Do you remember anything yet? Laura, you remember anything? <sighs> Laura. get some sleep? It'll be dawn in a few hours. And the days are very short around here anyway. I hope tomorrow's a good day. Today wore me out. dozed off. Hey, um, you should take this. You'll need it if you're gonna go up to the other building. Just jiggle the lock a bit and the door will open. There's some sort of storage facility there, but it's too cold to stay for long. Not that there's much there except a lot of junk and a hatch on the floor. Uh, the hatch seems to lead down to a cellar, but it was frozen shut. The building's just up the hill. There's a large yellow lamp, but be careful because it's very dark along the way. Take the snowmobile if you want. Well, good night.
Mm-hmm. 
Linda, listen, do you hear that? Yes, dear. 
So, this is the sound of death. Oh, what I hear now is that faint whisper, the sound of all life coming to an end. Earth is dying. The sound is so bittersweet. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I really understand. No, dearest. You understand much more than I do about everything. If you say so. Linda, I'm so happy that the two of us can be together at this moment. <gasps> Who's there? Is someone there? Is that you, David? No, couldn't be. So, we have a visitor on our last night. I don't know what you want, but don't come any closer. Please, I don't want anyone to see me in this debilitating condition. You know what I mean, don't you? A monster has gotten me. Oh. I'm still alive, but I'm beginning to change. I'm transforming into a monster myself. Linda, this may be a suitable end for someone like myself. No matter what happens, you are still you. Linda, I remember everything so clearly about the night we first met. So do I, dear. The stars were so beautiful. As they are tonight. Uh, if I close my eyes, I can see the stars the way they were that night. How did I stray so, so far from that to become the madman that I I am. You are no such thing, my dear. Yes, yes, I was mad to have turned you into this. No. I'm very sorry, but please, keep your distance. This is how I want to meet my fate with my beloved wife under the stars. Probably heard, but many people in the outside world call me a mad scientist. It's true, but only insofar as this planet itself is mad. I was consumed, obsessed with the desire to see the moment of death for this cruel, savage world. I was nothing more than another doomsday monger and didn't even know it. In the ten years since both our sons grew up and left home, I've known nothing else. My obsession cost me every cent of the profits earned from refining an indigenous lichen. Then, finally, my hard work and devotion produced tangible results. It was two years ago, while studying eclipses and old sundials, that I realized the truth about Stonehenge. By mapping the light and shadow patterns of Stonehenge, then computing them against the position of the stars, I came to the conclusion that Stonehenge had been used to predict solar eclipses. And as I made further progress, I finally discovered that Stonehenge was actually created to predict a specific day, the final day of all days. 
the end of everything. This discovery shook me to the very core. For 30 years, I had waited for the apocalypse. And with that knowledge within my grasp, my mind recoiled in horror. Earth was about to die. Along with everything in it, was this what my heart truly desired? I christened the day, the great eclipse, and tried to pinpoint the exact time of its occurrence. By then, I had changed my mind. I wanted to save this world and needed to know when the end would come and how it would occur. Unfortunately, it took more than a year and a half for the computer to calculate the answer. It was only three days ago that I learned that the Great Eclipse would fall on December 25th in the year 2000 on Christmas Day. But who would listen to the ravings of a madman? I sent for my, my older son, a special agent with the FBI, but apparently he could not make it in time. Who would have guessed such a thing? A shower of meteorites touching off a pandemic of mutations, people turning into plant-like monstrosities, we are being consumed. The entire planet is being cannibalized. The great unknown has always been with us throughout our time on this planet, let alone in the far reaches of space. This day was deduced and recorded in stone around the dawn of history. But we of the modern age choose to remain ignorant for all our great learning, all we can hope to understand is how much we do not know. By limiting our concerns to those of humanity alone, we have lost sight of the stars. We have no memory of our beginnings and will perish unaware in the end. All we could do was bring glimpse into the chasm of time. I have a favor to ask of you, stranger. Would you please commit us and everything here to flames and ashes? Destroy all traces of my work. There is nothing more I can do. Absolutely nothing. What good will a warning be to a new civilization that is sure to evolve in tens of millions of years. What little humanity I had left was taken by those creatures. At least allow me the dignity to choose my own end. Please, break the glass by your side and get the flamethrower. You must put an end to all you see.